All right, here we go. We are just past example six, okay? So we know, and I'm going to draw this from yesterday, if I have the unit circle, okay, a unit circle means the radius is one, and by Pythagorean theorem, I have x squared plus y squared equals one squared. And because x is equal to cosine theta and y is equal to sine theta, I can substitute that into the x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. And that gives me cosine theta squared plus sine squared or sine theta squared equals 1. And if you remember from Algebra 2 last year, in trig, because it's cumbersome, it's like difficult to write the quantity cosine theta squared all the time, the convention is that we put the little 2 up here. So it's cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, but that's the way you say cosine theta times cosine theta. So what I want you to do right here is let's divide everything by sine squared theta. Okay, divide everything by sine squared theta. And so simplify that. And what I get is cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. Why? I don't understand that at all. <laughs> okay. What I did is I just divided everything by sine squared. I'll, I'll explain if you just kind of stay with me. Is Do you see? Oh, I just divided everything. Cosine squared theta over sine squared is a cosine over sine cotangent. Oh. Yeah. Sine squared over sine squared is 1. Ah. And one, 1 over sine is cosecant, so I just made it 1 over sine squared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there like somewhere that has all those rules? Is that how it's supposed to write down? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, didn't, I had no clue that cosine divided by sine was equal to cotangent. We, we did it, yes. We did it yesterday. I wrote it. Oh, like you know. <laughs> we wrote it yesterday. Yeah, I probably have to talk about that. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. Right. Ethan, Ethan. Yeah. You need to stop, okay? You need to stop. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide. I'm going to take the this one, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And now I'm going to go through and divide by cosine squared theta. And so when I do this, cosine squared over cosine squared is 1. Sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. And what is 1 over cosine squared then? Secant squared. So now, and, and you did this last year. This should not be something that is new for you. I, what, everything we're doing yesterday and today is a review of your trig from Algebra 2. So the cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, that's called the Pythagorean identity. And what I just developed, and here's a cool connection back, if I connect all the way down to Algebra 1, do you remember when you solved equations and we would add something to both sides, and we called that the addition property for equations? And you multiply both sides of an equation. That's called the multiplication property. So... I can divide, okay, that's the division property for equations. So now flip the page, and I put them in a box for you with the three Pythagorean identities. But I wanted you to see where they come from. I, I didn't just pull these out of a hat. It's coming from the unit circle. Yeah. Are we going to have to have all the identities memorized in the unit circle? Um, I do expect you to know cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. I personally don't memorize the other two, but I can figure them out. So I'm going to expect you to memorize cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, and I expect you to be able to figure the other two out. I don't want you to memorize them, but, you know, I mean, it takes 30 seconds to get the other two. All right, now, let's use this to figure out example 7. It says, given that sine theta equals 3 over 5, and that theta is the 
between 0 and pi over 2, find the value of cosine theta. So let's pause here a moment. And what does theta between 0 and pi over 2 do for me? Yeah, Eddie? Uh, x, and y are positive. x and y are positive. Why? Uh, because between 0 and pi over 2, you would have to Beautiful. OK. When theta is between 0 and 90, okay, that's first quadrant. And that means the x and the y's are both positive. So now watch this. We're going to use cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. Now, this is not the only way to do this one. So if you're remembering something from last year, you're welcome to use that other method. I'm going to show you that tomorrow. But today, kind of the purpose was, like, why do we want to look at the Pythagorean identities? So here's cosine squared theta plus, I'm going to substitute for sine theta. And then I'm going to take you through the algebra here. 3 over 5, when I square it, is 9 over 25. And then if I subtract 9 over 25, that's 16 over 25. And we're going to make a beautiful connection to our quadratics last year. If I want to solve cosine squared theta, equals 16 over 25, you're going to do plus or minus the square root to both sides. Okay, this was chapter 4 in Algebra 2 last year. So I get cosine theta. Okay, this worked out really nicely because the square root of 16 over 25 is 4 fifths. Now I'm not done, but I'm going to pause a moment. So this is the algebra part. So I've gone through and I have to do the plus or minus. But the reason why I circled this and had you stop and think, theta is in the first quadrant. So what do I know about cosine theta in the first quadrant? Positive. It has to be positive. So my answer is cosine theta equals 4 over 5. It's not the negative, but what we're going to find is as we move to different quadrants, sometimes I want the negative. Sometimes I'm, I'm going to want both of them. Depends. All right, I'm going to pause, and I want you to try example eight. Use this technique, or if you remember a different one, you're welcome to do that. It says given sine theta equals one half, theta is between zero and pi over two, so that's indicating your first quadrant. Find the value of cosine theta. So get as far as you can on this one. All right, this is first quadrant, so my cosine value will be positive, and so I'm getting cosine theta is radical 3 over 2. Will it ever be negative? Yes, it will be negative. If, if I said to you that theta was between pi over 2 and pi, and I move it into the second quadrant, because it's the x value, then it would have been the negative. Okay. Then, what if I said to you, theta is between 0 and pi, I would have both. It's a great, great question there. All right, Roman numeral 6, using periodic properties. This is really cool. It says certain patterns in nature repeat again and again. For example, the ocean level at a beach varies from low tide to high tide and then back to low tide approximately every 12 hours. If low tide occurs at noon, then high tide will be around 6 p.m. and low tide will occur again around midnight, and so on infinitely many times. 
if f of t would represent the ocean level at the beach at any time t, then the level is the same every 12 hours later. So we would have f of t plus 12 equals f of t. The word periodic means that this tidal behavior repeats infinitely. The period 12 hours is the time it takes to complete one full cycle. So in general, if f is a periodic function, then f of t plus whatever the period is always be, would be equivalent back to f of t. So sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi, and tangent has a period of pi. So watch what we're going to do in example 9. I have find the sine of 9 pi over 4. Well, 9 pi over 4... If I think about 2 pi, like one time around, if I use a common denominator of 4, 2 pi is equivalent to 8 pi over 4. So 9 pi over 4 is more than one time around. So the sine of 9 pi over 4 is actually equivalent, if I subtract the period length, which is 2 pi, I would get the sine of pi over 4. Again, because of the periodic nature of trigonometric functions, the sine of 9 pi over 4 is equivalent to the sine of pi over 4. So if I use my unit circle, first quadrant, what's the sine of pi over 4? Radical 2 over 2, and that's it. So now let's look at letter B. The tangent of negative 5 pi over 4. Well, the tangent has a period of pi. Well, pi, if I put it with a common denominator so that I can actually add the fractions, that would be 4 pi over 4. The bummer is that's still negative. Now, if you can handle it, isn't a negative rotation just into the fourth quadrant? We can do this. We can do it this way. So if I rotate, this is in the fourth quadrant. Sine would be negative. The sine of negative pi over 4 would be negative. Radical 2 over 2. And then the cosine is positive radical 2 over 2. So isn't that negative 1? See how I'm doing that? If you don't like the negative pi over 4, you could add another pi and get 3 pi over 4, you can go this way. The sine would be positive and cosine would be negative. It's still going to be negative 1. All right, let me pause, and I want you to try C and D. Then you're going to need your graphing calculator out. I'm going to show you... Um, getting ready for what we're going to do tomorrow, just to make the keystrokes with the calculator. But like this, you should not be using a calculator at all um, to do exact values. over 2 for letter C. I went all the way to 7 pi over 4. That's right down here. Cosine, the x value is positive. Radical 2 over 2. Cotangent, 5 pi over 4. That's third quadrant. Cotangent is the reciprocal of what trig function? Tangent. So these are the same thing. Radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2, and they're both negative because you go left and down, so that's positive 1. All right, last page, home stretch. Why do the trigonometric functions model phenomena that repeat indefinitely? By starting at a point P on the unit circle and traveling 
the distance of 2 pi, or even 4 pi, 6 pi, you get back to the exact same point on the unit circle. So that's why we have the repetitive behavior infinitely many times if we let n be any integer. All right, last topic. If you have your graphing calculators, take them out. And what I want you to do is I want you to get to the home screen, okay? Get to your home screen. Hit the on button, okay? Hit that for me. And I want you to go down to number five that says settings. And I want us to check that we're in the right mode. So go down, I hit the home or the on button, go down to number five that says settings. And then I want you to go to number two, document settings. Let me repeat that. You press the on button, which is the home, go down to number five settings, and then click on number two, document settings settings. Press enter. The second one says angle. And I want it to say radians. So change it to radians and then go down to the bottom and you have to click make default and press enter. If you don't, it stays back in degrees. Alright, now if the purpose is we want to use a calculator to get a decimal, which we'll see tomorrow when we solve some uh, real world problems, here's what you're going to do. So get into the new document, new calculator page, and you know where the trig button is. So you're going to press trig cosine pi over 4, and let's go four decimals. So I'm getting 0.7071. If there is no degree symbol, it's assumed radians. So go ahead and try B, C, and D.